All right, Keisha in the building. All right, so what's going on with you, young lady? How you feel today? Ah, uh, the same. All right, I guess. All right. So you uh you a new truck driver, uh just got your CDLs and you hail from Louisiana, right? Yeah. All right, so Louisiana, man, you born and raised there? No, no. Oh, okay. Was you was you down there doing the uh Hurricane Katrina? Yes, well, you know, my da my dad was in the military, so I was born in, you know, in Virginia cuz my dad was in the military, moved around. And then uh when I was about Two or three, I moved back uh, to Louisiana. Okay, so you've been there ever since you was ever since you was young. Right, right, correct. All right, so you know it's funny that I just uh, about a couple of days ago just got finished watching the documentary of uh, Six Flags New Orleans. Uh, it used to be called Jazzland down there, the park. And, you know, they did a little documentary, you know, of how, you know, the best times before Katrina hit, you know, they was they were saying how awesome the park was and and everything like that. But then, of course, Katrina came and, you know, the park sits desolate now. So you how old was you when when Katrina hit? I, I don't know. I was young. All I, all I could tell you is I was young back then. Do you remember any other, do you remember anything that your family did in pertaining to uh, when Katrina hit? Did did you guys uh, evacuate the city? Did, you know, can you remember what happened during that time? Well, uh, we didn't evacuate. Uh, we stayed home because, you know, I was living in St. Martinville, so it wasn't you know, it was bad where in my area, but not that bad. So you guys wasn't in the um, in the kill zone, so to say. No, no, we were not. Okay. So after Katrina left, what what was some of the stories that you guys heard, or what was some of the you know what what was some of the stuff that you experienced after Katrina left? Well, I, I well, my family really didn't experience much but just had to put a, a new roof on the house and everything uh but it, i know new orleans had it bad and that's the people that really had to be evacuated to different places like Tex texas and other different states but where i was like i said again it wasn't that bad for us it just was a lot of wind throwing things around and rain so how is it how is it down there now? Louisiana is still building a couple of places look like they came up a couple of places still sits uh docile. But for you guys, for you, you know, still being a resident of Louisiana, you know, how's how's the vibe down there now, at, you know, years after? Yeah, a little better. Uh I guess. I know they're fixing a lot of. I know they're fixing a lot of roads. Every time you turn around, uh, no matter which way you go, roads are being fixed. You see, it, it, it's it's like that in every major city, huh? Yes. All right, all right. So you 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 reached out to me. Uh, there was a video of a young lady that was, uh, you know, giving her story about uh, being hemmed up at the uh, DLT physical. Um, you reached out to me and you say you got a similar story to that. So go ahead and uh, tell us your story. And by the way, I take my coffee the way I take my women. Are you sure you want to pay 75 bucks for a cup of coffee? Uh, uh, well, like I was saying, I went, uh, just got out of trucking school. So I went to do a drug test because someone wanted to hire me. And when when I went to do it, I could I me as well didn't produce enough urine. 
So since I didn't produce enough urine, they they wanted to uh, give me water. So I said I had water in my car. So the guard, they sent a guard with me to my car to get the water. I drank the water, but it still wasn't enough. So I gave, uh, so they gave me some more water to drink, which I did. During that time, because I, uh, I got there at 240, but I wasn't seen until after 240 because they had other people before me. So uh, when they called me to go do it, I didn't have enough uh, urine. Like I said, I didn't produce enough urine when, I, when they called me. So uh, they made me stay there till, but the thing is, I didn't stay there three hours. I, the thing is normally three hours, but said so they call me after 2.40 and they close at five. They, uh, they was all, everyone had just left and I was still in there. And then when they found out I was there, uh, they made me sign a paper and I didn't know what the paper was because I'm just getting on a trucking school. So I asked her what the paper was for and uh, she said something that I had to sign. So I signed the paper not knowing what I was signing. So once I signed the paper, uh, I'm thinking I could come back the next day. So I, I hold my urine the next uh, that night. The next day I could go and I produced it a whole cup of urine. But then when I'm on my way to the driving place that had hired me said I was unable because I refused. And I'm like, I didn't refuse. She made me sign a paper because she was ready to go home because they had everybody had left. And when she realized I was there, she made me sign a paper. And I didn't know what I was signing. She said I had to sign, so I signed. I didn't know I was signing my whole life away. So right now, it, it is hard for me to get anything because I'm trying to, I was trying, I was so excited because I wanted to get my mom out of the house she's in because she took care of my mom, uh, my grandmother and my grandfather till they passed. And now the house is falling apart and I wanted to help her as well as myself. And uh, I'm unable to do that because no one wants to hire me. I even went through the SAP program because I heard about that and they still wouldn't huh oh I went to night do you know night do their own testing they said I had qualified for everything so I did everything they said I drove the truck I passed the urine test I passed the drug test everything because I don't drink or smoke or none of that they said I was good to go they're going to call me with somebody to come uh, to train me. I get back home, they tell me they don't take the SAP program. I don't know why I had to go through the SAP because I don't drink or smoke. I didn't even know what I was signing. She just said I had to sign because I had a shot by I didn't know. First of all, uh, I know I'm all over the place, but I think that she had supposed to send a doctor to verify how come I had a shot by None of that happened. They just refused me. Uh, you know, because I signed the paperwork as a refuser, said it to set it uh, off. And uh, it's just a lot. I'm all over the place. And, uh, and, and, and uh, not only that, Knight did all that, and I was good to go. It's for the set. You know, I also went to Super Ego. You know, they accept the SAP, right? But uh, they told me they take you without the SAP and no experience. So I go to Super Ego because that's what the lady told me. Get there. She talking about you need experience. How am I going to have experience when nobody wants to hire me? I'm just straight out of trucking school. I never had the chance to get experience. I caught a SAP on that. So I, I had to. What I did was, because I thought it was going to do, I had to borrow against, uh, do insufficient funds to get there, because I had no money. I did insufficient funds to get there. 
then you're going to tell me they don't, you don't take me because they don't need experience. But who's going to hire me if I, don't, if I got the set? So I got two things. No experience in the set. So no one's trying to take me. So I had to, uh, uh, they had to pay for my way back. They didn't want to do that until I uh, had to tell them I need to get back home. You know, you you brought me out here. I had to find my way out here. I paid my way out here thinking I was going to get a truck and everything and everything was going to be fine. Y'all told me no experience, so I'm going to what y'all say. So they was wrong for that. So they finally uh, bought me a bus ticket, I mean a plane ticket, to get back home to my family. So I went through all that and still nothing. And that's just hurtful to the core because I feel they should tell uh, people when those are straight out of chucking school or whatever, before you go do the urine test, make sure you prepare. Drink water. Let's make sure, tell them, you have to make sure you have your water. You have to make sure you're able to produce because once you go in there, you are unable to leave. You, you hold hostage. In other words, you're a prisoner. You're unable to leave to your produce, and that's not right. And then if you go and go back and use it the next day, it's invalid. So I mean, I mean, this, it's wrong. They need to change that law to me personally. That's just, that's just me. And I also did, because all this I'm telling you, I also did a petition to the FM. CSA and I and I did a petition to try to get that uh, result because I feel everything it was wrong. So they told me in 45 days they're gonna let me know. So yes, I did that too because I'm trying to get myself self back. And I appreciate you just allow me to tell my story. I know I was all over the place. Forgive me for that, but I appreciate uh, you doing that for me. And if you know someone or anyone out there that could help me to that I something I don't know that could help me to do better or whatever I would appreciate. Well, I, I want to thank you for coming on to uh, share your story and and uh, and what's uh, going on with you. So let's go ahead and un, unpack all of this. You're unfortunately, I've, I I I want to say that. You signed something that you 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 didn't know nothing about. I you 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 was probably rushed to sign it, so it didn't give yes. you it didn't give you the chance to read what you were signing. Oh no, right? Because like I said, it was under three hours because I got there at two forty, but I wasn't because uh, there had other people ahead of me, so we didn't do uh, I didn't do the urine test until they called me later on and then by the time uh five o'clock came they was ready to go so they closed their doors at five and did it they didn't even know i was still in the building and when they found out i was because i was the only one still there and when she found out i was still there she wanted to go home so she just made me sign the paper like you're gonna sign this because i'm ready to go do you recall what you signed did did she tell you what was that you was signing no. Oh, I even got even better. After I did the petition, right, what I did was I went back over there to get information so I could have sent it to the FMA, uh, you know, I'm sorry, FMCSA. I went over back over there to get proof of everything so I could have sent it to them, correct? So when I did, the same lady that did this to me was there. She told me, I remember you. You can produce enough urine. Now, in front of everybody, you going to remember me after what you did for a whole year? So you know you did me wrong if you're going to remember me. Because she also told me, well, it's a year now. Can't do nothing about it now. So what you trying to say? If I would have gone back in earlier, you would have done something? So, you know, to me, that's telling me, that's just my opinion. You, that's telling me you did me wrong by you remembering that 
I didn't have enough urine and you're remembering a whole year afterwards. So that's just telling me, you know, that's just my opinion that she knew she did something wrong. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to play devil's advocate with you. Um, I'm going to say both of y'all was wrong. You, uh, okay. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm definitely going to say she was wrong because she should have at least told you what you were signing. You know, Correct. she, she should have at least told you what, what you were signing. I'm going to get on you because you didn't read what you were signing. Correct. Never, never, yeah, sign, I, never sign anything without reading it first. I you're mean, right. You're right. That, that so, was, but for, my part, yeah. But let me let me see if I understand this because you said you you just now said that this is like what a year later. So you took this yes, about a year a, later. So you took this about a year ago. So this wasn't recent. Yeah. Yes. So I've been no a year ago. So I've been having my CDL and unable to do anything with it since a year ago. Yes. Okay, so you had your so you graduated out of out of CDL school, and the first company that you that you was going with sent you to do the the DOT drug test. Uh, you didn't fail the drug test, so let's make sure we get that clear. You just didn't right. produce enough urine, and they didn't allow you enough time to you know re, you know get yourself filled up with water to produce enough urine because they was in a hurry to go and am Correct. i right am i writing in all that yes you oh, are okay then i would think i i would think because of course being that you signed that uh, that's pretty much saying that, yeah, I know, yada, yada, yada. Um, uh, it's a refusal, yada, yada, yada. Obviously, that's what you were signing, uh, a refusal slip. They sent it into the FMCSA uh, clearinghouse saying that you refused it, but you didn't know what you, you, you didn't know exactly what you were signing. So I Correct. would I, I would think that you can petition FMCSA uh to reverse that. But again, like I said, they'll probably come back at you and be like, you know, you 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 signed it. You you said, you know, you this is your signature right here, and that's what they're gonna go by. So that's what cool. they that's what they might do. But have you you said you said you you did petition it. Who was it that you got in contact with or or was this all through emails through through the FMCSA? All through the uh uh the emails they sent me some paperwork to uh to do and I did it and I and I emailed them back with everything. So how long ago was this when you when you put that uh when you put that email through? Last month. I just heard about how to petition and I did it last month. So last so you haven't heard nothing back from him as far as uh no. I'm sorry? No, I never heard nothing back. They said it, it takes forty five days, that's what they told me. Ever since then, uh, you've been trying to put in, you know, applications with different trucking companies. Um, being Correct. that you, being that you're in the SAP, you know, that you're in the SAP program now, uh, a lot of these companies aren't, you know, too keen on taking SAP drivers. Well, let me rephrase that. A lot of these companies aren't too keen in helping SAP drivers getting back behind the wheel of a truck. Let me, let me put it that way. Uh, so the last but not least thing that you did, you decide to give controversial company Super Ego a try. 
what what was what you already said in your story time that uh you you talked to them they got you there um but what i mean after 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 you told them that you was in the sap program they still didn't give you a chance to drive or was it because of the lack of experience that you had they said it was cuz of the lack of experience but didn't but didn't you tell them that during the during the recruiter call i'm i'm sure the recruiter you told the recruiter hey i'm a new driver i don't have the it's have the experience the recruiter still kind of roped you in to come into the company yes yes and then the other lady uh when i told her everything she said i'm sorry she should have never tell you that so that's why they sent me home too because uh, they paid to send me back because the lady that told me that she knew she was wrong she said she was sorry but uh, i'm like you should have uh you know, find out all the details before you uh, tell me to get out there. You make coffee? Yeah. yeah. Do you want some? Mm hmm. Yeah, that that is true. That that was a that was an H move right there. That you know they you know these recruiters these days they they just. They they in the business of trying to you know just fill the seats for the trucking company. Sometimes they get a sometimes they get a commission. Uh, if they was an outside source type deal, uh, the only way they get paid is by you actually going to the company. So basically, that's what they did. They roped you in. You wasted your time, and. You you said that they that they got you a plane ticket back. How how did you how, how did you uh how did you get that to happen? Oh, cause I was I wasn't leaving until they do it because they sent me out of here. So I told them that's your responsibility to get me back home. Cause you told me I would get there, everything was taken care of. You didn't mind. I didn't have a. You didn't mind. I had a staff. You didn't mind. I had no experience. You told me to come out here. I took you out to work. It wasn't what you said, so you're going to get me back home. And I was not leaving until I get back to my my hometown, Louisiana, back to my state. Because you brought me out there, so it's your fault. So you're going to have to take yes. So I didn't leave until they got me straight. Because you had already messed over me by telling me to come out here. So, yes, you're going you're gonna to pay for that plane ticket. What was your impression when when you got to uh, Illinois? What what was your impression when you when you got to uh, Super Eagle? You you got there, you got into the yard, you went through the front door. What what was your impression of them? Oh, it was it wasn't good. I, I'm not I, I'm not gonna lie to you. If I didn't have the sap or and none of that, I wouldn't have never gone to them. It's not what they say at all. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. It's not. The trucks is not what they're talking about. Good trucks, no. The building, everything. I'm gonna be straight up. No, uh, if I didn't have that staff and try to get, I wouldn't have never gone to them. They're not good at all. That's my opinion. So you walk, you you seen the the trucks? They not all that. They, they not all what they said it cracked up to be. What was your no? Uh, no. What, what was your? Uh, what was your impression of them of the office itself? Because I I hear different uh, drivers. Uh, they say they they you know they wasn't impressed with with the way the office is set up. Oh no! So soon as you get in the office, it's just like a regular thing. They just got a, a, a like a, a table desk there with chairs and you know and people all over the place. You know. With their luggage, with them dragging their luggage as they go on, you know, it was, it was, it was something, yeah. It was a sight to see. Yeah, it was. It wasn't good at all. Now uh, you're you're back home, and you're still, uh, you're still trying to uh, figure out uh, which route to go. Um, 
and again, you said you paid the six hundred dollars. So of course, you're in the clearinghouse right now. So what's what uh, what's your experience with the clearinghouse? Like I know there are six steps. So uh, what what step are you in right now to you know to hurry up and get up out of the program? Well, well, to be honest, I'm in the fifth step, return to duty. I just need somebody to uh, hire me so I could get that part over with to start taking my drug tests and all that. But nobody. Yeah, because uh, I've been in this sap for a year, you know. Like I said, and I'm on the the fifth uh, stage. So how each how how did each stage work for you? Uh, explain to us how each stage works. Oh yeah, well uh, I looked online and I found a person that uh, do the sap program, and I called him up, and we talked, and he told me how to. Uh, what I needed to do. So, and I told him, uh, well, mine was pretty easy because I didn't fail the drug test or nothing. And, and uh, I just had trouble doing the urine. So he really basically, I just had to do a simple program. You see what I'm saying? And I, I just had to do three things. I didn't have to do a, all that other stuff that people have to do that have a drug test. You see? So I didn't, because I didn't have a drug problem. You said six hundred, but how much? How much was all the no, no. all together? No, no, mine wasn't six hundred. That's why I said I didn't have to pay six hundred because I didn't have to go through all that. I only paid like four, four hundred. Yeah, you see, because like I said, it's like he did different because I didn't have to do uh, uh, uh I didn't do the drug thing because I just had a shy bladder. I it wasn't because of no drugs or nothing. So now you're in the final stage and you just need that company to uh you know to do the drug testing and 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 you know and follow up with the FMCSA so that you can complete the program. Right. Okay. Uh what was the comp- what was the initial company that you that you went with to take the initial drug test? PTL I can't forget that one. Okay. So you went back to PTL and what what happened with that when you went back to tell them what happened? Because I'm assuming they was the one that told you that, you know, you, you was refused, right? Right, right. So what that conversation was like? Oh, uh, the man going to tell me after I uh, did that, he said, well, you know, uh, we can't hire you. We we can't because you had a refusal. And now that you have that on your record, no one is going to hire you. He told me that just like that. No one is going to hire you. You, you. you you shouldn't even be in the truck and field. No, no one is going to hire you. Now, how you tell that to somebody after you said me? He, he said that with a condescending tone. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Thinking about it, just getting to me right now. It, it, it wasn't nothing that they can do. They, it, it wasn't nothing like uh, that they can be like, well, look, you know, they was closing. Like, bro, they they was closing. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe a little maybe about an hour more, maybe it's like I said in the, in the, in the video, maybe, you know, maybe an hour more, but they didn't even give you, they didn't give you the, the FMCSA required three hours because I, I looked it up. I, I looked it up and, and shy bladder is a thing. I, I, ain't, I ain't even think it was a thing. I, I thought, you know, when I, when, when it almost happened to me, uh, you know, I went there, uh, and they made me stay for like a couple of hours and I had to drink. Like I said, it, it was increments. They, they didn't even give me like full cups of water. They gave me like, they had to, they, and I was asking them, I was like, yo, can I, can I get a full cup of water? No, we, we got to give you, uh, eight ounces or whatever the amount that they was giving me. And I was like, bro, this, 
this ain't gonna do this, this ain't gonna do nothing. So he um luckily for me, I <laughs> luckily for me, I was I was able to, you know, I was able to, you know, give them the required and it's two cups. Like, bro, like I I, I don't know. I guess they send one off to one company and then they send another one off to another company to 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 verify. I, I don't know what this what this two cups of urine thing is, but it is what it is. You know, and and like I said in the video, you know, we we need to come prepared. We <laughs> I mean if you get a random or if you, you know, going for, you know, for, you know, for the test, for the pre-employment test, yeah, drink plenty of fluids, you know, drink a lot of water, man, because it, 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 shy, shy bladder is a thing now. So you can get a refusal just for shy bladder. That, that, that's crazy. That's crazy that they won't give you the opportunity to to come back they won't give you the opportunity to you know at least retake the test or whatever i mean it ain't like that you guys are 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 popping neck or popping positive it's just that uh, y'all bladder ain't filled you know right. so so yeah, I I implore everybody that that's coming into the to the industry and they going for uh for the drug test to definitely have a lot of water, man. Make sure you drink a lot of water. Um all right, so a year later, it's it's still a little bit difficult for you to uh to get anything. Have you have you tried other uh, options? Maybe like, uh, maybe like passenger bus, or maybe the uh, constructions, or dump trucks, or anything like that. Box trucks, or anything like that. I tried, but nobody. They always, you know, want experience, and that's what I like—experience. Man, so you 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 hit you you hit with the with the double time, the the lack of experience right. and being in the in the in the clearinghouse. But for you, you was again you you wasn't in the clearinghouse because you you didn't pop negative or you didn't pop positive. It was just that again you couldn't uh you you couldn't produce enough urine, so. Yeah, I, I am definitely sorry to hear that, man. A lot of people in the comments, um, you know, some of them say, you know, try to, you know, look online for a lawyer or something like that to see if, if, if that'll work. I, I don't know, uh, per se, you know, sap inf sap information is is something that I learn every day. I, I I learned this every day. I I learned about the steps. I learned the, and, and I just recently with the story time with the young lady just learned about uh shy bladder because I I I didn't know what that was. And I I looked it up and it's yeah, it's it's a thing, but on the FMCSA's website pertaining to shy bladder, though, uh, if I read that right, the 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 office should at least give you guys another opportunity to the to come back and 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 take the right. test. I mean, right? I, yeah, I, supposed to. I I have read that. Uh, right. I have read that and. I, I don't understand why why would that be uh why would that be a why would that be an issue? Because it says is it is said it in the FMCSA thing that that the doc is is 
I guess, you know, the wording is that it's up to the doctor to right. retest you. So right, right. I I guess, you know, being that you go to these trucking companies and they they send you to their own uh clinic or doctor, you know, I guess they they got some type of contract or something like that. Because for me, you know, I know I have to go to their doctor, you know, for the for the for the drug and all like that. But uh-huh. for the DOT physical, I got my own doctor. You know. So oh. but for the for the random, you know, my company will call me up and be like, hey lockout, um we need you to go and do a random. Oh, okay. Uh when do you need me to do it? Uh we we got you set up for tomorrow. Okay. I already know that it's time to start drinking some water. <laughs> <laughs> so I I got to my random and I told that young lady when I went in there, I was like, hey, um, let's get this pee out the way. Well, we got to fill out. The, hey, hey, it, we, we can fill out the paperwork after I get this pee out the way. What you you got to use the bathroom? Now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, if you if you want this pee right now, let's let's get it going because it's it's gonna go one or two places. It's either gonna go on the floor right now or it's gonna go in these cups that you want me to put it in. Which which right. one you want me which which way you wanna go with this? Oh, okay. So I guess you you yeah, I, I yeah, I, I did yeah. Yeah, I I drunk a lot of water before I got here. So but that that's my thing. That's what I would suggest for, you know, for people for now on. You know, if y'all know that y'all going to take a take the drug test or y'all going to these places, make sure you drink that water, man. Make sure that bladder is filled up so by the time you get there, you'll be able to you'll be able to fill the two cup thing. Keisha Thank you very much for coming on and sharing your story with us, man. Um, who did you who did you go through to get your your CDL? You you went to school or you went through a, a company? Do you want to come up for a coffee? I don't drink coffee. I haven't got any. I went through school, uh, uh, SLCC. Okay, down in Louisiana, what made you what what made you want to get your uh, CDL? Well, uh, I got laid off off my job because I wouldn't take the vaccine, and so they laid me off. And uh, so uh, I just was looking one day, and I seen where they said I could go get my uh, CDL. So that's when I went. Uh, to get my CDL, you you got a grant for that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you got laid off. So you you got laid off during COVID. Correct, correct. Oh, okay, okay, okay. COVID. Uh, what was what was the um? Oh my God, what what was the, how how did that? How did that play out for you? Uh, you you refused to take the vaccine, and yes, what they yes. just they they just said because of that they they said yo you're out of here. Correct. Wow. See that was something that I I had a hang up on. I actually took the first round, but I got like uh-huh. I I got like super sick. I, I I came down with COVID. I I came down with COVID, and I came down with um. I came down with pneumonia, and I I was, I was out of it, for about a good five six months. You know, shout out to my company for being there for me. But yeah, I I was yeah I I was put on the, <laughs> I, I was 
I was out of it, uh, sis. <laughs> but uh, you, 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 you uh, refused to take the vaccine, so you, you didn't, you, you didn't do the vaccine at all. No, no, cause uh, look, you, look, you still caught the uh, COVID taking the vaccine. So why take? You know, that was my issue. Why I take it and then, you know, and I never caught it. That's that's a that's the funny thing. I never caught to this day. I never caught cold. You know, it's like if you, like if you would take the vaccine, that's when it it gets you. That's a lot because a lot of people I heard that took the vaccine all of a sudden they caught cold. I never took the vaccine. I never caught it out. Yeah, I yeah I I. <laughs> I got that. I got the first round. Uh, I went out, and as soon as I as soon as I went out, uh, I I started feeling like I I started feeling it. Uh, I say maybe around Tuesday, and then Wednesday it kind of accelerated. Thursday it got worse. Friday Friday when I got home, I I was I was done. I, I got home, I called my son, I told him, I said, I'm coming in hot. I need to go to the hospital because I'm, you know, I'm I'm over here coughing, sweating like a dog, not not you know, not feeling good and everything. And um I get to the hospital and and uh, about an hour or two later, yeah, they, they came back and said that uh that I had COVID pneumonia and they admitted me they admitted me right then and there. Um, and then from there, I got transferred to another hospital. And I've been in that, I've been in that hospital uh, for three months, three, four months. And then I came home or I was released. I came home uh, for about another, for about another month before I actually got back into the truck. And you know, I talked to my doctor. My doctor always say, "Hey, you know, did you do you do you want to take the the follow up?" I was like, "No." He said, "Are you sure?" I, no, because I I never had COVID. I never experienced COVID before I got the shot. And everybody keep telling me they was like, "Well, it 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 wasn't the shot. It was it it was probably laying dormant." Or whatever the case, uh, well, whatever it was, whatever it was, I took the shot, and when I took the shot, then it all came. It all came out. So, yeah, I you know, I I I passed on it. So. But uh, but for you, you never you you never took it at all. How how was uh, mm-hmm. our, it it was it was it was crazy time during that time too. So how yeah. was it how how was it like in Louisiana? I mean, was they trying to force you guys to take the vaccine or or what? Yes, yeah. they they were yeah you know. Certain jobs, you know, you got to take it or you, you know, they could, you could even go to the doctor even if you didn't have COVID. If you just tell them you got a, uh, if you just tell them you had a little cold or something or whatever, or your head was, a, the first thing they say, COVID. You know, it, it was bad down here. They, they had COVID for everything. Big G's got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real white, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah. Security. 